Hey guys, Mike's Getting Greasy Garage. Um, so what we have here is the coil packs off of my son's 1996 Chevy S10. And as you saw in a recent video, we're chasing a runnability problem. And I kind of left that video hanging because no, we still hadn't figured it out yet. And with the uh, new the the new diagnostics that I have access to you know the, I shared a video about it the champ.li I went through I ran codes I went through all the flow charts on the codes it was giving me and did everything changed some other parts still just couldn't really get this thing to run right and so last night it was dark I needed the truck move, so I told him, I said, get in it, hold her to the rev limiter, and back it up out of the way so that I can have other stuff come in. And when he did that, he revved her up and dumped the clutch, because it's a manual transmission. A uh, whole bunch of real pretty bright sparks uh, shot out kind of back behind the passenger front wheel. And there was no... No metal sound, you know, no, nothing grinding. So, based on the fact that on the passenger side of the engine, down low by the oil pan rail next to the bell housing, there's some ground connections for the wiring harness. Uh, there's a whole bunch of sensors down there. You got cam, cam sensor, crank sensor. Uh, the coil packs are down there. These two plugs for the coil pack. Anyway, I had him undo everything on the harness, pulled the harness up, and couldn't find any burnt spots or anything really corroded. No signs of, of a dead short. Um, now, part of the issue with this thing was once it would get warm, it would start doing its weird thing, which essentially it would run okay until you put it under load. And as soon as you let, try to let the clutch out to move it in reverse or even forward, it would sputter and die. It would occasionally run fine when it was cold. Uh, thought it might be these. Had already tested these coils. They're fine. Uh, like I say, checked wiring harness. Did all map sensor on it. All kinds of other diagnostics. I mean, I've been chasing this thing for two weeks. <coughs> Excuse me. So, when I saw the sparks, actually my dad, my son's grandfather, saw the sparks first, tracked it down, pulled the harness off, there was no other components down in that corner of the engine bay besides this. So I had my son go ahead and pull the whole works out. So, first he pulled the coils off, and... Nothing burnt, no cracks, no shorts, nothing, no signs. Let's see if I can. And again, the other coil, same deal. Actually, this one re we replaced last year in 2023. So, no issues there. Well, underneath this, you have an ignition control module. This is virtually nothing different than what's inside of a distributor, like an HEI. Uh, any of your ignition modules. This is the ignition control module on that this style coil pack system. And you know all the terminals look good until you pull it off. And what do you see there? That's been arcing quite a bit. And if you look on the mounting bracket you can see it actually shows up better in this camera right in here Let's see if I can turn this get a little better light on it but you can see that gray spot right here and it's been arcing for a long time well uh, being this is ignition stuff it is you know higher voltage it runs on full 12 volts and then you have the amperage generated or the jewels or whatever it's called from the coils 
and so this is the culprit this is where the sparks were coming from so unfortunately these are no longer available in the local auto parts store Amazon didn't have them we did find one on eBay um, he's in kind of a time crunch to get this thing going his other car is having clutch issues young boys in their cars yes yes I know and I, I'm the lucky guy lucky dad that gets to help him fix everything so uh, tomorrow's Monday he's gonna go ahead and hit the wrecking yard we have quite a few of them around here and see what he can get one of these for uh, on eBay they're 80 bucks I'd like to go to rock auto but their, their shipping is expensive and it's always the slow boat so I'm gonna go ahead and get a used one and uh, get this thing back together but yeah that's uh, there was no no codes no uh, runnability codes no misfires anything else that were related to this and I was that's what was kind of driving me nuts is I didn't really have an, any direction I would have never pulled this apart had we not seen sparks shooting out at night so I don't know I'm, I'm kind of a thought now that if you're chasing a weird runnability problem you know look give a good look at your ignition control module if you have one so anyway guys uh, I just thought I'd update you on that and once we get the new module and get it back in I will show you what's going on there so Anyway, questions or comments, leave them down below. Um, you know, all that good stuff. Uh, like, share, subscribe, give a thumbs up. All those little things help out the channel. A lot doesn't cost you a penny. Welcome to the new subscribers. Uh, and uh, if you're not subscribed, please do. I, I generally show all kinds of different types of content. And um, we're going to be getting back into the 59 here in the next day or two. Uh, we also got the Turbo LS that I'm just about ready to start up. I finished up some of the stuff on that today. Uh, Sundays, Sundays are generally my day off, but I just I enjoy what I do. So even on a Sunday, I'm out here in the shop. Anyway, guys, uh, that's enough out of me. Uh, thanks for watching, and stay greasy, my friends.